Hi everyone, I want to share a story to you. It's a literature in the Philippines that told the story of a prince named Indrapatra and how he defeated the monster named Omakaan. And the story goes like this. Long, long ago, Lanao was inhabited by a powerful giant called Omakaan. He was so big that he easily stepped from one hilltop to another when he walked. His legs were like two pillars that reached almost the clouds. It was said that the sea came up only to his knees and that the cloud breaks the tops of the mountain and hurled them as a weapon. He was so cruel and greed that all living things in Lanao trembled for their lives as soon as they heard the earth shake under his feet. One day, Raha Indrapatra and his brother Raha Sulaiman were having a serious talk. They were very, very strong men and their fame as fighter was known far and wide. They were very, very brave too. Nothing on earth scared them, scared either of them. Sulaiman said, Lanao is a very beautiful region. But it is neglected because people are afraid to go and live there. They are afraid of the giant Makaan. Lanao will remain in, uninhabited as long as the great monster alive. Indrapadra said, This cannot go on forever, Brother Suleiman. Let us do something about it. We have to go and fight the giant. Once he is slain, people will be leaving to go back to Lanao. The Suleiman answered, Let us go around the lake. I go one way and you by another. We shall meet in Cape Timbalangan. The brothers bade goodbye to each other on the shore of Lake Lanao. Raha Indrapatra held his brother by the shoulder. Indrapatra said, Goodbye, my brother. I am sad because I have a feeling that we may never see each other again. Maybe it is I who shall die, or maybe it is you, my brave brother. But whoever is left will avenge the other's death. Take good care of yourself and guard your magic sword and ring. Salami man said, Goodbye, my brother. I know that Umakaan is the most deadly of foes. There is death in his very breath. His grip is as the grip of a hundred men and his strides are so long that no man can run away far from him. So be careful for your own dear self, O my brother in the Rapatra. After the brother had exchanged words of affection, they parted. It happened that on the way Raha in the Rapatra had to stop to marry a beautiful nymph, so he was delayed. When he arrived at the cave Timbalangan, he knew that he was too late for the meeting with his brother. He could see in the torn hillside and the rocks scattered on the shore that there had been a great fight. Indrapatra, Alas, my brother is dead. I know what he was torn to pieces by the claw of Umakaan, but before I go and fight him, I must find the magic sword and ring that belong to my brother Suleiman. I have more chances of winning if I have them with me. To find the sword, Indrapatra in the thought of a trick. He stood near a balete tree and placed two stones near each other. With a stone on his own knee, he made a stove in which he built a fire. The sight of a man making a stove out of his knee was so funny that the evil spirit who lived in the balete tree laughed aloud. Then the evil spirit named Ba E. A. Salendegal said, You silly man, why do you do that? Can you not put a third stone to complete the stove? As soon as Raha and the Patra heard the laughter of Ba. E. A. Salendegal, he stood up and climbed the balati tree. He made such noise and shook the tree so strongly that the evil spirit begged him to stop. Ba. E. Salendegal said, Plead, great Raha, please go down. You are shaking me off the tree. 
And Rapatra said, I shall go down only when you tell me what happened to my brother Raha Suleiman. Okay, I will tell. I will tell you, but you must go down at once. Bai Selendego said. Raha in the Prata went down and Bai Selendego told her story. The good Raha Suleiman arrived at Kem Timbalaga and waited for you while you married the nymph. As he waited, he rested on the rock on the shore. It was there that Umakaan found him. They fought a terrific battle. The earth thundered with their, with their struggles and lightning flashed from the spark of their weapon. The giant said to your brother, Since you must strike me with your sword, why don't you strike hard enough to cut me into half? In that way, you will kill me at once. Upon hearing this, Raha Suleiman struck the giant with all his might. Then Indrapatra said, What happened then? Baisal and Dego responds, The two half of the giant fell to the ground. Immediately, upon touching the ground, this half became two giants as big as the original. Suleiman stuck at this and split them into the two half each. And immediately, the four parts became four giants. From four, they become eight. This was too much even for brave Suleiman. He fell under the combined might of the eight giants. They tore his body apart, they got his sword and his ring and threw them into Lake Klenau. Immediately upon hearing the story, Raha and the Patra went to the water, scooped the mud from the bottom of the lake and dumped it into the hills. After working like this for a day, he found the sword and the ring. It was then the monster Umakaan came upon Raha and the Prout in the Rapatra. Umakaan said, Who is this man that dares to come and disturb the sleep of Umakaan with his scooping of the mud from the lake? And the Rapatra said, I am the Rapatra. I have come to avenge the death of my brother. So you are going to kill me? What can a little man like you can do? The giant stretched a finger at Raha and the Patra with the intention of picking him up and making him dance in his huge palm. The brave Raha struck him at him with his mighty sword. And the Makan said, How dare you strike me, you little man? I'm going to kill you for that. With one blow, the giant struck at Raha and the Patra. But the Raha quickly jumped to one side and stuck the giant on the breast. The blow was so strong and the sword was so sharp that the giant was almost cut into two. If you have to strike me, Umakaan said, why don't you cut me into two? That is the surest way to kill me. And the Rapatra said, oh no, you clever giant, I will strike at you and wound you, but I'll never cut you into two. The fight lasted all mornings and afternoon. By jumping from one place to place, Raha and the Patra kept the giant from uh, laying a blow on him, for the giant had a big club made from the trunk of the biggest tree in the forest. Late in the afternoon, as the sun was sinking, the giant's strength was completely spent. He was bleeding from hundreds of wounds. He was almost cut into two in several places. One more stroke from the brave Raha sword and the giant Umakaan was dead. And Rapata said, At last, Lanao is freed from that terrible monster. Lanao will be inhabited by happy people once more. The Maranao still tell story of this great fight. When they go to the hilltop and, the, and see the shells, they say, Look, those are the shells that the great Raha and Rapatra scooped from the bottom of the lake Lanao when he was looking for the magic sword and the ring of his brother and Raha Suleiman. When they see the hills, they say, Look, those are the rocks thrown by the Raha and Rapatra and Umakaan when they tried to kill each other long, long ago. Okay, from this story, we have learned that it has a similar um, event that is happening to us. It is the spread of the coronavirus. And from this, the coronavirus is like Umakaan. And ac according to the story, that Umakaan 
is so cruel and greed that all living things in Lanao trembled for their lives as soon they heard the earth shake under his feet. So here it was just like a prophetic uh, mythology that been told uh, uh, in Lake Lanao. Then, um, according to the to this story also, that the way, the only way to 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 defeat the enemy is to strike it slowly so that by gently wounding uh, the giant it will get weak and lose his strength and as we see on the ending of the story the giant was uh, killed because he lost his own blood his own strength so at this point of time we are battling together to strike or to, to end the the pandemic effect of the coronavirus and at least we have been advised here to slow down for a while and let the virus let umakaan strength get weak because if we we if we feed them with all our might it will get strengthened but if we uh, starve this virus from infecting other people it will get weakened we cannot strike it with all might because striking it with all our power will only multiply it only multiply uh, the situation and, and that is what happening right now the coronavirus is spreading so fast from one you can infect 10 person and from 10 person you can infect 100 person and from 100 person it can multiply into thousand and now at this moment the the situation is almost half million of people are already infected so at least let us starve this virus so that it will not infect more the more people they see outside the more people will also get infected but if we stay at home and keep ourselves uh, uh, safe from getting infected then it will weaken and suddenly everything will stop so i hope you learn from this story so until then may you all Blessed be peace. Mayarina, pagasatin.